Hey Ryan, it's been a long time since we made videos with each other and I've been wanting to bring it back so I'm hoping today we can start off uh, with something I think we should talk about. Today in the United States, it's Labor Day. And I think a lot of us, myself included, when we first heard about Labor Day when we were younger, maybe didn't totally understand it. What is Labor Day? I mean, a job is a thing I go to, I labor, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. Why do we need a separate day to celebrate labor? What is this all about? Well, to try to get at answering that question, I wanna to talk to you about a woman named Ella Mae Wiggins. Ella Mae Wiggins was born in around the turn of the century, around the early 1900s. So by the late 1920s, she was about 26 years old, and by then she had already had nine children. Now, four of those children had already died horribly from a disease called whooping cough. Now, a lot of us don't know what whooping cough is because it's a disease that has been mostly eliminated thanks to modern vaccines. But back then, it was a horrific way for children to die in large numbers. So four of her children had already died horribly, and at that point, her husband left her. So now she's left with five remaining kids, trying so hard to raise them herself as a single mother. Mother. And to do this, she's working in a textile factory. Textiles is like cloth making, and she's working in this factory, and because of the way laws were set up in the 1920s, she has to work 12-hour days, six days a week. So only one day off, and her shifts were particularly bad. They're usually late in the day, and she wasn't able to fully take care of her children. So she was repeatedly going to her bosses and asking to change her schedule around so that she would be able to take care of her kids. Uh, many of them were struggling with other diseases, and she needed time to care for her children. And repeatedly, her bosses told her, no, 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 never, never, no. By the way, those 12-hour days, six days a week, that earned her about $9 for a whole week worth of work, which even in the 1920s is not a lot of money. Well, she knew that something had to change. She wasn't going to be able to make a better life for her kids unless something about this system was able to be changed from the top. So she became an advocate for labor standards. She pushed for these changes in a lot of different ways, trying anything she could. She would go give public lectures. She was often asked to testify in front of Congress. She wrote songs to try to popularize the plight of many of the workers that she worked with, including one song that was covered by Pete Seeger decades later. Now, back then, pushing for changes to labor systems and for the rights of workers was seen as a horrifically bad thing to do. People said it was attacking freedom, the freedom of business owners to treat their workers however they wanted. People accused her of being a communist and accused other labor rights activists as being communists. Imagine the controversy that we sometimes get today with some of the racial active movements like Black Lives Matter or something like that, and the role that that has in society today in terms of engendering all this opposition, that's what labor activists were kind of like in the 1920s. They were loved by those who supported them, but also fiercely hated by those who opposed them, and it was a cultural conversation that was very charged with a lot of emotion on all sides. So on September 14th of 1929, Ella Mae Wiggins and a group of about 20 other activists were on a truck and they were driving to a meeting to go do what they normally do. That truck was intercepted by a huge gang of anti-communist activists and they started attacking the truck. And the guy driving floors it and they escape and they tried to drive away. And then the truck is later stopped about five miles down the road by another group, this time of armed men. We don't know exactly what happened, but some sort of altercation broke out Shots were fired, and Ella Mae Wiggins lay dead on the ground. Eight men were arrested on charges not of murder, but of manslaughter in this case. One of them was a deputy, local deputy Horace Wheelis. So the police were involved in this. Now, according to eyewitness testimony from people that were there, Deputy Wheelis himself is the one who pulled a gun on Wiggins, aimed it right at her chest, and fired. Throughout the trial of these men, 29 different witnesses came forward to give testimony about what had happened. The result, after 29 different people gave their testimony, was that all charges against the accused men were dropped, and to this day, the death of Ella Mae Wiggins remains technically unsolved. And I bring this up, I think it's important because so many of the things that you and I take for granted about our jobs, the fact that we only work Monday through Friday, that we have generally eight hour days, that if we go beyond that, we're usually paid overtime, that we have Saturday and Sundays off, that there's an expectation that our job should be most of our life, but not all of our life, and that we should have the ability to raise a family, that we should have the ability to have lives outside of work. Those are all things that you and I take for granted that were not true 100 years ago. People like Ella Mae Wiggins and others fit a huge pattern of fighting for these rights that you and I take for granted. The fact that our children don't have to go work in a factory and lose their limbs in machine accidents. The fact that we have two days off a week. The fact that it is only 40 hours a week in general. The fact that there's workers' compensation laws if we get injured on the job. All of these things are things that had to be fought for. Fought for against people that thought that they were an infringement on freedom 
that if we make laws protecting workers, we're destroying freedom in this country. They're not things that just kind of happened. And because they're such a part of our daily life, we assume that they just kind of happened over time, that they just kind of developed. This is the way capitalism goes, and we just it kind of develops, and these laws grow over time. But that's not the case. Companies and managers fought against this. And when I say fought, I mean sometimes killed people. In the 1920s and 30s, companies had their own private security forces. And a lot of times they would partner with police forces. There were people that would protest in the streets, carry picket signs about wanting to work five days a week instead of six days a week, and they would be shot dead in the streets. Or at best, they would just be beat up severely and left bloody on the side of the road. And I'm not talking about a couple of people, I'm talking about hundreds and thousands of people over decades of action. We talk a lot in this country about people that are willing to give the sacrifice of their life for their country, about giving duty and honor and respecting the institutions that this country was founded on and laying down their life to do so. When we usually talk about that, we're usually talking about the military, and that's great. But we often forget to talk about these labor activists that literally gave their lives so that you and I could only work 40 hours a week, so that you and I could have Sunday off. The people that were shot dead in the streets so that our kids didn't have to work in a factory, so that they could go to school instead of dying in a factory accident in which the employer would not be held accountable. There are things we take for granted. There are things that if they weren't true, we would be outraged. If all of a sudden all of our bosses said we all had to work all day Saturday, 12 hour days, and that's just how, how it was now, we would be rightly furious. But that's how it used to be until people like Ella Mae Wiggins stood up for these rights and gave their lives for them. And that's what Labor Day is about. Labor Day is about honoring the sacrifice of those people who gave down their lives so that you and I could have a comfortable work life and enjoy a work-life balance that they didn't get to enjoy. So when we're hanging out on Labor Day, when we're relaxing, or whatever it is we're doing to celebrate Labor Day, we all just need to remember that there are people who gave the ultimate sacrifice so we could enjoy this day off. That's all I got for now. Hope that wasn't too serious, and hopefully I'll be back with some more videos. I got some more stuff I want to talk about, so we'll see you later. Thanks.